Welcome to another edition of the RE Source Masterclass Series, and I'm here with a stud, a legend, a man that means, needs no introduction. Barry Habib, thank you so much for being here today, man. Ryan, thank you, my brother. Thank you very, very much. I'm a big fan of yours. Uh -huh. Man, I followed you my whole entire career, you know, all of your companies, especially Mortgage uh, MBS Highway right now. Um, I wasn't going to do this, but since you and I just spent about an hour on the phone and you showed me everything cool on MBS Highway, I got to give it a shout out because I thought I was like a power user. You showed me the whole other side and I felt like there was at least three or four pieces of technology wrapped into one. Uh, so if you're an originator and you don't have MBS Highway, you got to go check it out because it's more than just what you think. Take it from a person that thought he knew. Um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty badass. So, And if you're a realtor, ask your originator if they're using MB MBS Highway because Barry showed me a lot of tools that they would love as well. And we'll talk about it a little bit, but just wanted to give you that quick plug. That's really nice of you. Thanks, brother. I appreciate that very, very much. Very well done. Anyways, let's get right into it. Everybody knows kind of like your you know, your area of expertise. You've done it for years and years and years. You've been on TV um, and everybody wants to know, like I just saw that rates hit a seven year high yesterday. The feds didn't really do anything as, as far as moving interest rates. What is your thoughts? Like in your crystal ball, what are your thoughts on rates? Are they going to continue to go up? And if so, how high? When does it stop? Okay, so it's a really good question. Um, first of all, what happened to rates is really interesting as well. So the Fed had been buying, you know, we've been in a fake market for the past nine years. We have finally and uh, entered into what starts to look like a real marketplace where you get more volatility up to increasing rates, more volatility to worsening mortgage-backed security pricing because we've had this safety net underneath us and that's been Fed buying over the last nine years. And even though QE1, QE2, QE3, QE Lite, Operation Twist, you name it, <laughs> yeah. all these programs that amassed four and a half trillion dollars between treasuries and mortgage bonds were in place, even when the Fed said they stopped, they really didn't. The dirty little secret was, Ryan, was that they had been repurchasing the maturing treasuries and they had been repurchasing the receipt of principal payments from either paid off mortgages or principal pay downs or just the normal amortization that they get. And that was amounting to about $50 billion a month. Now they said, hey, we're going to slow this down. Janet Yellen wanted to start that last October and they levered it down. They lowered it from 50 billion to 40 billion last October each month for October, November, December. Then January, they went to 30 billion for the next three months. In April, they went to 20 billion. July, they went to 10. And just now, just a month ago, they stopped. And that's why you're seeing this volatility because you don't have the Fed in the game. And each time they've done that in the past, when they ramped it down, we saw rates go up incrementally. It's a beautiful, if you look at a chart of interest rates or chart of bond pricing, you see it's, it's perfect harmony. And, and it stands to reason because look, it's all supply and demand, right? You've got the government in more debt. They've got to issue more bonds. At the same time, the Fed's buying less. So that's why you're seeing interest rates rise. Now, the double whammy here is that the European Central Bank, and the world is really interconnected, has said in October they're lowering their purchases of their European bonds from 30 billion euro a month mm -hmm. to 15 billion euro. And come January 1, they're out. Now, you tell me, who is going to buy a Spanish 10-year treasury at 1.86%. You tell me who's going to be, be buying that market. And if nobody's going to be buying at 1.86% when it goes up, our interest rates, because the world truly is interconnected, will feel some of that and will get some lift. So you have increasing debt, which means increasing supply. You have not as much buying. It's a recipe for interest rates to move up. There are certain levels that we need to watch for. And, you know, I've been talking about these different levels in the marketplace. And one of them, that's, it's kind of easy for us to all follow, whether you're a real estate agent or mortgage professional. Right. And we know this. We know mortgages are based on mortgage-backed securities. But I like to look at the 10-year treasury because it represents an easy-to-follow barometer. It's not going to give you an exact guide, but it'll kind of give you good direction. So we are right now butting up against 3 and a quarter percent on the 10-year treasury. And that's a really important level, Ryan, because if we break above this level, we are probably going to see in the weeks that follow 3.63 as the next ceiling. And that ceiling isn't even very strong. The ceiling after that is three and three quarters. And that's a really good ceiling. The problem with is that mortgage rates would probably be about five and a half for that. Now, I do think we eventually get there probably first quarter of next year. So a few things to think about here. And I know it's a long answer to your question, right. but I want us to first of all, understand it and then strategize for yeah. it. Right. So, so the first thing is understanding this is like, we're right now between like 3.19 in the 10-year treasury and three and a quarter. 
I call 3.19 to use a baseball analogy like the warning track, okay? So we're on the warning track right. right now. Let's hope three and a quarter holds, and it could hold, and we'd be okay with that if that stays in place for a while because that means rates would be around where they are. Maybe we get a tiny bit of relief, but nothing terrible, especially when you think, relatively speaking, we're not in that bad of a shape. But we break three and a quarter. And now I want you to think about this if you were you know, a CEO of your own business, all of us, right? Right. This means you have to help, as a real estate agent, help your customer understand, hey, stop messing around with just a couple of thousand dollars. Either pony up, get that home, because it's a lot cheaper to do that and get a cheaper mortgage. And even if you're a seller, don't mess around with two or 3,000 or 4,000. Sell your home, be happy, get it out of the way. And then when you take out your new mortgage, you're gonna make it up because you got a cheaper rate on that anyway. Yep. So, so we have to think about this and look, start planning this. And when I say start planning, you should never do one mortgage at a time, okay? You know, we, we are not in economic cycles, we're in debt cycles, that's what I call it. Yep. And what we really need to think about is multiple financing opportunities for multiple lifetime events. So what I see happening in 2020, and I've been talking about this for a year, saying 2020, and now a lot of people are kind of jumping on this bandwagon, and there's a lot of reasons, and I'll tell you why, is I see a recession coming. So yes. a couple of things you should know. Uh, every time in history that we've broken beneath 4.5% on unemployment, a recession follows, okay? It typically takes three years to do so. When did we get into a rate where uh, a situation 4.5% on the unemployment rate was broken? Summer of 2017. That's, we're calling for summer of 2020. There's a lot of other factors that are in there as well. Here's the thing though, is that we have never, ever, ever seen a 3% unemployment rate in peacetime. When there's wars, men are out to war, yeah. labor shortage, you could see an unemployment rate drop, but it has never happened in peacetime. We're kind of close to that at 3.7%. So always, uh, it, recessions follow not when unemployment is high, it's when it hits its low point and starts to go the other way. That's when you see recessions happen. During recessions, interest rates decline. You're going to have an opportunity for lots of refinances in 2020. I want to slow down because we have a lot of, we, half of our subscribers are realtors. And so you're so smart and I'm, I'm sure the originators are getting all this. To wrap that up, realtors, there's been a lot of artificial downward pressure on rates. Very saying that that's now, you know, gone. And so rates have increased. You said, you know, we could see five and a half. Uh, by early next year, uh, Mortgage Bankers Association said something similar. Um, he's saying that there's a possible recession coming in 2020. You know, you were actually the first one to bring that to my attention. And then I started hearing it from other sources as well. So kind of bring it back full circle. What does that mean? You just started talking about that. What, that, what does that mean for the real estate community? Recession hits. Um, oddly enough, rates are going to go up. 2020, it sounds like you were just about to say they would come back down. So what does that mean to the originator and also for the realtor? It means you're going to have refinance opportunities. And it means that when you think about it, and historically speaking, the last six recessions, during recessions, home prices do pretty well. Why? Because you get the counterbalance of interest rates declining. So this is we're in a good place is what I'm trying to say. If, if, if you had to weather a recession, you want to be in the mortgage business or in the real estate business, okay? Because you're going to have some opportunities. But think about this. Talk to your customers. You don't want to be loading them up with fees up front. You want to be thinking about, and look, normally I'd say take out an adjustable, but because of the flattening yield curve, the difference between the 10-year treasury and the two-year treasury is so damn small, 30 basis points, that there's no room for much benefit in adjustable rate mortgages. If you can get some, get some, because it's a smart play if you can get a benefit from it because you'll probably will not have that mortgage longer than a five year period because you'll be refinancing out of it a couple of years down the road when that opportunity presents itself with lower interest rates. So, but, but means also don't pay a lot of fees. It means think about that you're going to be in a strategy where the loan you take today is probably not the loan you're going to have three years from now. You know what? You said something and you're dropping so much like gold. I got to pick it up and slow you down. Uh, you, where do you want to be in a recession? Because so many lenders and realtors right now are really nervous, a lot of contraction. And you said you want to be in real estate and mortgage. Did I say that right? Like, I think you just said that you want to be in real estate and mortgage. You do. You do. And, and that brings us to some of the other points. So, you know, we talked about housing is going to be good. But listen, how, how are you going to pick up some extra transactions here? You have to overcome some of the obstacles. So first of all, look, a 5% market, a 5.5% market, when you look at history, it is still really cheap. Oh, yeah, okay? absolutely. But, but I'll give you this. It's cheap when you look at, at, at the history of rates, but that's not accounting for the fact that prices are higher, so there's going to be more sensitivity. So I get that, okay? Uh, I'm not going to be turning a blind eye to this. Of course, there's a counterbalancing part to that. But here's the thing. What, what I feel is the biggest problem that's out there right now for real estate agents, you know I speak to realtors all over the country quite right. a bit, 
and mortgage professionals as well, we've got to address the big problem with payment shock. And here's what I mean. So you bought your home four years ago. You bought it for $400,000. You took out a $320,000 mortgage on it. And you got a rate of 3.5%. I looked really good at the time. That's all fine. And today your home went up from 400 when you bought it four years ago. And let's say it's 480. This is not an unusual circumstance, okay? Now, meanwhile, you've paid your mortgage down from 320 through normal amortization to about 295 or so, okay? So now, that's your situation. That's your reality. But you got a kid, you want a bigger space, or you just want something better. You want something more. You want more room, whatever it is, okay? You need more closet space. So what do you do? You want to move up in category. So if your home's 480 today, to see a benefit and move up in category, I think we'd agree that you'd have to look at around 600,000, right? right? Yep. So $600,000 purchase price, you figure out you've got about $190,000 equity. You can't take all of it out of your old home. You got to pay the realtor to sell the home. You got closing costs on the way in, closing costs on the way out. So you can take about 150, put it down in the $600,000 home. Now you've got a $450,000 mortgage. It's a 25% down, 75 LTV. And you're saying, okay, I can do that. But remember, you're going from a payment that's currently based on 320 to 450. That's a big jump. But now you're going to give up 3.5% and go to five or five and a quarter or five and a half. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> exactly. Put the brakes on this sucker, yep. right? Yep. How do you get around that? And this is where you have to do what I think is really critical, brother. I mean, it, listen, if you're listening and you're a real estate agent, you're a mortgage professional, you've got a big target on your back right now, okay? Technology is trying to take over your job, okay? They're trying to put you out of business every single day. That's their job is to eliminate yours. And believe me, this is not a great thing for us to go through, but it does provide opportunity. Because just like travel agents, okay? Now, if you're a millennial listening to this, you're saying, what the frig is a travel agent? Right. You mean, you mean yeah. Travelocity? This no, is, there used to be awesome. travel agents on every corner, but it got replaced by this. Got replaced by this pretty easily. Why? Because they thought they were advisors, but really they were just salespeople. And I bet you if you're listening and you say, well, maybe I'm an advisor, please think about that. Okay. Because an advisor is more than just putting it on your name tag. It's really understanding this. So if you want to truly act like an advisor, you better understand that what you do is you have to understand the, the money business and you have to understand the real estate business from the perspective of how do I articulate the financial opportunity to the customer. People shop for a home with their eyes. They'll typically shop online. They'll go see a home and they'll get attached with their heart, but they buy with their wallet or pocketbook and nobody sells the financial opportunity. If you're a realtor listening, listen, I, I know you guys, okay? Talk to you guys all the time. What do you sell? So, hey, look at the amazing hardwood floors, the granite countertops, the closets, the cabinets, look at the schools, okay? That's how realtors sell. There's nothing wrong with it, except that it has nothing to do with how somebody buys a home. And if you're a mortgage professional, I know you guys too. I did it for a long time. How do you sell mortgages? Okay. Hey, I'll get you approved, get you approved on time, get you closed on time, fight for the lowest rate and give you great service. Sound familiar? Yep. Has nothing to do with how somebody buys a home. It's all important, but you have to articulate the financial opportunity because that's how people buy. And if we start to do that, that's really critical. So getting back to our obstacle of payment shock, what do you do? That same person who bought the home, who's looking at 1200 bucks a month more in payment shock, now, when you take a look at their debt situation, you see that they have car loan, they have credit cards, they have other debts that you can then say, wait a minute, what if I paid those debts off by including them in your new mortgage, taking you up to a higher LTV, a larger mortgage on the new home, but incorporating those debts, I could step you into that new home for maybe a difference in payment of two or $300 a month, and now the customer wants to do it. Listen, you know what the best thing you've got going for you is the customer wants to do it. All you're doing is giving them permission. Great That's point. That's all you're doing. Yeah. Now, yeah. by the way, let's take the other side of the argument. Okay, what's the concern on this? Somebody might say, and rightfully so, Barry, wait a minute. So I like that. It's, it's all good and this and that. You're probably taking from higher interest rate into lower interest. It's probably good, but wait a minute, wait a minute. Are, are we doing the right thing by taking somebody's shorter term debt and putting it into a longer term debt? That's a great question. Fair I'm question, glad right? that you're thinking that. Yep. If you take the savings... In this particular example, I gave you the savings could be in the range of five, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars a month. You took that and paid down your new mortgage by that same amount. Guess what happens? You pay the mortgage off in 18 years instead of 30. You save $110,000 in interest. You build up $240,000 in net worth. So are you doing the right thing? You bet you're doing the right thing. But it's got to be managed. Think of yourself on the mortgage side as a debt manager 
And think of yourself in both cases, mortgage and realtor as an advisor. We just shot a show last week and we were, we were saying you have to become, we have to pivot and become an educator and an advisor. And so many people followed up with, we 100% agree, but how do we do that? You know, because we, we kind of, we jabbed at the realtors and the, and the lenders a little bit and said, you know, Taco Tuesdays are fun and, you know, giving away pies for free are cool, but what value are you bringing? And, Nothing. And, and Barry just said like the best, you know, like give you the exact blueprint on how to provide more value on both sides, real estate and lending. And I'm so glad that you did it. It was like perfect. From last week's show to this week's show, we talked about in general how, to, you know, it sh we should, we called it being a digital mayor, you know, being a mayor of your digital community. What's a mayor? A leader, right? You know? And so it, they, they understood, but they didn't know how, and this is exactly how. And thank you for bringing that up. We didn't talk that through, but it worked out perfectly. Well, it's awesome. It's awesome. And, and, and you also have to understand your local market. And what I mean by that is what is the forecast and historical rates of appreciation in your market? And how do you translate that? You have to understand that part of a mortgage payment is principal and nobody explains the, the benefit of that principal accumulation over time because it is totally dramatic. We worry about the stupid stuff like the difference in monthly payment for an eighth in rate or $3,000 in negotiation in a buy or sell. You know what? It's so stupid to focus on that. And I'll tell you why. Because either a $3,000 difference in payment or an eighth in rate on most mortgages, you know what it translates to? Something that's, that's intangible. What's an eighth in rate? What, 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 what do you mean an eighth in rate? So the difference between four and seven eighths and five, I don't know what it means. All I know is I want four and seven eighths. Yeah, well, what, is it? what is an eighth? Yeah. What? Can you touch it? Can yeah. you hold it? Can yeah. you feel it? What, what, what is it? Yeah. You know what it is? Break it down for them. Don't hide from it. I hate these people who teach, well, don't talk about rate. Da, da. No. Feature it. Focus it. Articulate it. Articulate it. An eighth in rate on that situation would be $17 a month. There's a coffee, you know, a couple Now of we know it's $17 a month. There's 4.33 weeks in a month. Now you're talking about $3.80 a week. I can't even get a Starbucks latte for that. Okay, so maybe once a week I can get three quarters of a latte. That's the difference of been doing business with me or somebody else. And if you're a realtor, that's the same thing about a $3,000 reduction from the seller or sitting with your house. Okay, so I could be happy and sell my home today and be done with this, or I could sit with this for the equivalent of maybe I might get the benefit of three quarters of a latte once a week. That's what we're talking about. And you know what it comes out to? 53 cents a day. So I ask you this, if you made an extra 53 cents a day, what are you gonna buy a Ferrari now with 53 <laughs> cents a day? What are you gonna do, go on vacation? So if you lost 53 cents a day, you're gonna say kids can't send you to college, can't afford it? You're gonna say, I gotta be a vegetarian, can't afford meat? No. What are you going to do? Is it going to make one difference, one single difference in your life? Would it make one difference? No. So if it's not going to make a difference in one decision in your life, why are you going crazy over this? Oh, I Sell love the it. home and be happy. I love it. You're Think on fire today, man. I happy. love it. Okay. I mean, that, just be common sense with people. Take it and break it down so they understand it. And that's what an advisor really starts to do. An advisor really starts to let that customer understand it. And then when you talk about the difference in amortization and what that means to you. That's 50, 70, 80, $100,000. 53 cents a day, $100,000. What's more important to talk about? Yet we keep this a secret and we focus on this. It's insane. It's insane. And you said at the beginning, they want to buy the house. It's really want, not that that's hard. The best thing you got going they for you. They want to make this work. Wow, man. I mean, we're already at the 15 minute mark and you've dropped a ton of knowledge. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you so much, man. This was amazing. You were on point. You were on fire. You guys may have to pause this a few times because we went fast, but there is gold here for both realtors and lenders. And Barry, thank you so much again, man. And we will, I hope to have you back on soon. Anytime you want, brother. Always great to see you. All right, buddy. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you.